Okay. okay. All right, so we're live. I'll just uh, give okay. some time for the ladies to join us now. Uh, ladies, okay. thank you so much. Welcome to our conversation this evening. I am having a conversation with Emily Mcharo, and I'll introduce her in a bit. Um, so ladies, thank you all. I, I saw your comments coming through when we put out the poster uh, that you were just really looking forward to this conversation. And I've had a chance to speak to Emily uh, maybe a month or so ago. And I am really excited about this because I was so inspired and I know that you will be inspired as well. So make sure you keep your questions, um, your questions coming. And, uh, you know, any comments that you have, um, you know, what you need to, what you feel that you need to learn about investing in real estate, we have the right person in the house with us here um, today. Emily, so thank you so much. We'll give it just a minute or so for the ladies to join in um, and then and then we can kick off. So I just uh, want to start by thanking all the ladies who have made time to be with us this evening. Uh, remember to tag whoever's not here yet. And for those who are just joining African leading ladies or have uh, joined us in the recent past, I'd like to welcome you as well to a space that allows us to grow, a place that allows us to get inspired, uh, to challenge us. And, you know, sometimes as women, as mothers, we get to the place where we just need somebody to push, at a, uh, push us a little bit out of our comfort zone. And my dream and my hope for Africa's leading ladies is just that. It's that we'll come here for mentorship, we'll come here uh, to be challenged, we'll come here to even just to get inspired. So you don't have to talk too much. I know there's some people who say, I'm a, I'm a quiet member, I'm a quiet listener, and that's all right. Um, the, at the end of the day, what I hope you will get from this group is, is something to, to, to make you better, to uh, take you to the next step uh, from a career and you know perspective and just a place where you can also make amazing networks we do have some amazing amazing women in this group with us so wherever you're joining us from please let us know um i can see we have some ladies who are already talking to us Le greetings from toronto thank you so much and just a quick one ladies you, you know we usually use Streamyard because it's it works extremely well for our live streams, but it also does not allow us to see your names unless you click on allow. So please do that so we can see who you are and where you are joining us from. Um, so as I mentioned um, on the poster earlier today, we will be talking about how to start investing in real estate. And I know for a long time we have been looking at real estate and many people have been looking at real estate from a point of view of I'm buying a home or, you know, we are getting a home for the family. But sometimes, you know, we may not have all the money that it takes to buy a home because, I mean, look at our prices today. Yet there's so many opportunities to, for us to begin to investing in a small way, in affordable property, um, you know, that could range from anywhere between three, four two, three or four million shillings and, you know, just around that space. So the conversation we want to have this evening is uh, to spar us really, to think about investing in real estate. Um, and, you know, I'm big about starting small. So I think this is an incredible conversation that has inspired me before. And I hope it will inspire you as well to really start thinking of, of getting financially independent because this is what investing, um, you know, is supposed to give us. So I'd like to now welcome um, our amazing, amazing guest. Uh, uh, her name is Emily Incharo. Emily is a financial independence ambassador. She's an economist, a certified public um, accountant, a CPA, and a chartered financial analyst. She's passionate about enabling investors attain financial independence, uh, leverages on her training as a chartered financial List and a certified public accountant and extensive experience in the banking industry. Having attended financial independence through investing in real estate over a period of 15 years, she believes that this goal is attainable. In addition to formal workshop presentations and one-on-one -on -one meetings with investors sharing her personal journey, she provides investors with practical ways to start investing. Emily is married to Mr. Mcharo, an architect and founder of 
Bubble, and they have two children aged 19 and 16. Maybe they're a little older now, but Emily will tell us um, in a moment. Emily, thank you so much. Um, I'm so honored that you uh, were able to make it to join us this evening. Uh, this conversation has been a long time coming, and I know that the women in the group are thinking about you know, growing themselves, teaching them to put themselves to the next level. Uh, and I'm so excited that you're here. So, first and first, um, you know, as a fellow woman, I just want to know who's Emily. Tell us that before we get into into the business. Story. Okay, okay. Um, what can I add to to that introduction? Uh, but um, uh, who's Emily? Um, I think first, first a wife and a mother to, to these two boys, uh, these wonderful boys. Uh, one is nineteen. One is years older. Now he's seventeen. Um, yeah, I'm a Christian. Um, I love the Lord. Um, yeah, I think that's that's really who I am. Uh, just a simple lady out there who is trying to make a difference in in society. That's that's yeah. what I do. And, um, in trying to make a difference, of course, I'm I'm very passionate about uh, financial independence. Um, I'm very passionate that you know that many of us will actually believe it is possible. Um, I'm passionate about women, um, just, you know, to get women to a place where they should believe that they can, that it is possible to, to take charge of their own financial matters, to actually learn about investments and to actually invest and become independent women. Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely passionate about that. So that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. me. That's really my career. Yes. Yeah. All right, and um, you know, I'm just thinking about about what you've said, and it's 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 where many of us women are. You know, we're we're thinking about mm -hmm. financial independence, um, mm -hmm. and you know, many times there's so much coming our way, but we may not always have the right information to help us, uh, well, to enable mm -hmm. us make the right decision as far as yeah. investments are concerned. Which is why i'm really honored that you know that you could come here this evening because you have great experience you started off yeah. small um and very, that's very the thing small. you know sometimes we, we 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 need to see the small starts for us as women yeah. to actually believe that we're done so tell us tell us about the beginning uh so oh i'm sorry i'm being told to look at the camera the camera is that one not the screen okay teriana was busy looking at your face but I'm supposed to look at the, the camera. <laughs> uh, apologies. Yeah. yeah. So um, the beginning, uh, I, I, I got married very young. I got married at 20, I'd say 22. Um, straight from campus. Um, actually, yeah, met, met Miss Amchara while in campus. Uh, and, and our journey started really, really quickly. Because even before I cleared campus, I already had my first born son. Um, yeah. you know, so life was very hard. Life, life for the beginning was, was extremely hard. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, with this son, uh, still in third year, then fourth year, Mcharo had just finished campus, just tr struggling to make ends meet. So life, life was pretty hard. Uh, but in, you know, in a short time we were able to, he was able to get a job and, you know, shortly thereafter I was able to also finish campus and start working. And life got better, you know, when rent was difficult to get, when we started working, we could afford rent uh, and we could afford food and, you know, life got a little bit better. But after a short while, we started asking ourselves, before we finished school, uh, we were able to pay rent, we were able to buy food and we were able to survive. As hard as it was, we were able to, you know, to, 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 to make our ends meet. Then we got a job and, and we were still able to make our ends meet. But the unfortunate bit was that we had no savings. Uh, so we started asking our quest, ourselves those questions. Is that the way we would like to live? And that was, I'd say, perhaps I was about 25 years old by then. Um, we started asking ourselves those questions and we're like, no, that is not how we want to live. Uh, we would like to start uh, investing. And we had seen too many people, you know, guys who had very good jobs, uh, but either they lost their job at some point or they retired and life became very hard. That was so far-fetched. I mean, we were so young then, but we could still relate with them and were like, no, we wouldn't want that. That time comes and then we are, we are broke mm -hmm. and life is hard. And then uh, our son, uh, for some reason, we really wanted our boys to go to Harvard. 
So we, we somehow knew Harvard, uh, we wouldn't be able to afford school fees in Harvard using salary. So we knew we needed to invest. So that's, that's where the conversation started. And at that time, I think our combined salary was about 50,000, right? Mcharo Mcharo and I. So that is very little money, 50,000, two children, uh, and you're thinking of investing, really, can you really afford? Uh, but, 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 you know, we started having those conversations and started wondering what we can do. Um, and the first thought that came to our mind, in fact, to Charles' mind, is that we would like to, he wanted to build apartments. So he told me that and I laughed at him. I'm like, who does that? I mean, we are, we, that's not for us. We can't afford that's for those other people. So I laughed at him. But the dream was already there. The dream was already in his mind. Um, then we, 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 we started thinking about student hostels uh, because I, I come from Bungoma. So when I'm in Nairobi, I lived in a student hostel. And I used to see my mother struggling to pay 4,000 shillings. So we're like, there must be a lot of money in hostels. So we were able to go to a place, look for land. And that's how our journey began. Um, and we were able to find a lady mm -hmm. who allowed us to pay for the land over time. So she gave us, you know, she gave us a grace period. She, she told us, pay whatever you can afford. Um, I think she just saw these young people. And when I went to see her, ladies, I went, I went with my little baby. I think he probably was about three or four months old. Uh, that was the second boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, that elicited a bit of mercy or pity, maybe. And she was like, I will allow yeah. you. I will allow you pay for the land uh, for as long as you, as you need to. And, and that triggered a lot of changes in, in our financial journey. That's, that's, that's really what led to a lot of the decisions we made um, because we needed to live on a very thin budget to be able to pay for that land. Um, the other thing that it made us do, Mcharo started looking for other jobs, other projects on the side to be able to just raise the money to pay for the land. And the land was 1 million shillings. So for people who earn 50,000, mm. 1 million is a lot of money. But I, I believe where there's, a, where there's a will, there's a way. There's a way. Yeah. So Terian, that, you know that was just the beginning yeah. of our journey. My, my goodness, that's amazing. You know, I'm just thinking back yeah. from, you know, when you've talked about your dreams of uh, taking your children through Harvard. Um, your combined yeah. salaries are fifty thousand bob. I mean, it's it's anybody yes. guess how much Harvard, you know, an education like a Harvard education would cost. But that tells me yeah. that you knew where your dreams were, and you knew we need to yes. work towards achieving yes. this particular Working. dream. And yeah. and I'm glad that you've told yes. us about the the cost of the land because I was curious about that as well. Um, in terms of yeah. you know, was it yeah. scary in the beginning when you're like, okay, this yes. land is a thousand, you know, one million. You and I combine million, have 50 yes. per month. That's for everything, yeah. plus our house, plus. So, um, and what yes. kind of carriage is that? Um, I think, I think um, for, for some reason, we, we were not limited by our place at that time. Uh, we didn't see ourselves as this is our place in life and we will stay here. We knew, we knew, I mean, we were professionals, we had we had done well in school, uh, we had jobs. So we knew it was just a matter of time and we'll be able to make, um, you know, our incomes will be able to increase to a level where we could afford. Yeah, so it was scary, definitely. It was definitely very scary, but it created in us uh, such a determination to work hard, such a determination to, to look for other ways of making money, uh, and such a determination to even live lean, to, to live on basics only. And every extra coin then would go to then we go to paying for the land, yeah. So yes, it was scary, but but for some reason we just felt it is it is possible. It's it's something that's achievable so long as we kept at it. Of course, we thank God that this lady had given us grace. If she had told us it's a million and pay me in two months, we would have walked away. This this would never have been possible. But she gave us time. She just said we will yeah. allow you to pay for as long as yeah for as long as it will take. I remember his her sons actually complaining that you know, mom, what are you doing? These people are paying 20,000 shillings a month. When will it ever get to a million? But yes, yeah, yeah, we believed it was possible and we worked towards it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. So that was the beginning. Yeah. That was the, the hostels. Just take us through the journey yes. because, I mean, so you got in. Okay. What the so we got in. Property. Yeah, we started paying. Um, and then I'm yeah. sure there was construction. There was yes, yes, yes. So um, we were able to finish paying for that land in two years. 
So between 2004 and 2006, we were able to finish paying for the land. Um, and I mean, we, we really thank God for that. And then we, we wanted to, we, I mean, the idea was to build, right? And in that, in the course of those two years, uh, I had joined a circle, Charo had joined a circle. Our salary had actually sort of increased. I started saving about 20,000 in a circle. So by the time we we're finishing to pay for the land, I think, uh, you know, a year after, so three years, a year after we had finished, I was in a, I was, I was able to borrow a million. When you save in a circle, you're able to borrow three times the amount you had saved. So I'd saved, I think, about 300 and something. So I was able to borrow about a million shillings. Um, Chao could also borrow a million shillings. So that, that became two million. Um, and we knew we could start with two million, you can start building. But we had the courage to look for help. So we went to we went to actually a relative and asked him to join us to partner with us to to start building the hostels and they agreed to partner with us. Um, so in that process, we were able to build about twenty three rooms, yeah, just from the loan from the circles from the two of us and uh, a little money from from this relative of ours. We were able to start building um, and we built twenty three rooms. It was very difficult, uh, you know. Thank God, that Charlie is an architect, so he could manage the construction process. But yeah, in, in a short time, we were done with the construction. And, but, but you know, someone will tell you after you finish building, maybe it's going to be easy. It wasn't easy because it took time for us to get tenants. Uh, we still had running expenses. So we knew 23 was not going to be the number. By that time, you know, we had started reading about uh, financial independence. We had a financial independence number. You know, we had read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So we knew 23 was not the number. We needed to build more. So, you know, we were not sitting excited, we've reached, we've made it. We needed to build more. So, so we needed to think, what are we going to do? Um, and as a result of that, I actually changed, you know, my employer, I used to work for Kenya Shell, actually looked for a job in a bank just so that I could be able to borrow from the bank, right? Yeah. So I was able to borrow from the bank and then we continued building. Um, and, and just continue, that became, that became our, our only investment. And, and, and Terian, I tell you, you know, we, we decided this is going to be our standard of living. So while our incomes were increasing, I mean, Charo was a very successful architect. His income kept increasing. My income in the bank kept increasing. But every, incre every increase in our income went to build, right? So we didn't change our lifestyle. Uh, we just continued building. And then I was able now to borrow from the bank. And in the bank, you know, and the reason I moved to the bank is because when you're working in a bank, you get loans at a very low rate. I was able to borrow, and then we continued building. So that just became the focus uh, for, for honestly, a period of 15 years. Yeah. Of course, by yeah. around the seventh year, things got better. I mean, the rental income was a not a lot, but you know, those are a significant amount of rental income. But that rental income went back to the hostels, right? So. Only a portion of my income went to living expenses, but in Charles' income, all of it went to building. Uh, the rent that we got from the hostels went back to building. So we, we put a lot of money in just reinvesting. Yeah. And, um, and, and we knew when we get to yeah. about 100 units, we will be financially independent. Yeah. So that, that really was a journey. Yeah. It was long. It wasn't short. It was 15 years. Um, it wasn't easy because we needed to be, you know, very focused, very intentional, um, limit our standard of living and just make sure every shilling goes to, to the investment. So it wasn't easy, but, but we were able to attain financial independence. And uh, Terian, I mean, I've, I think we've talked about this. Financial independence is just being at a place where you have enough passive income, passive income, not income from your business, not income from salary, but passive income, income from investments that is able to finance your lifestyle. Yeah. So we, we were able to get there. You know, our target was for us to get there when I'm 40, but we were able to get there, I think, two years before when I was about 30, 30 37, going to, to 38 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the that was journey. That was the journey, Wow. That, that, that is... Yeah. That is so inspiring. Um, and I'm just looking at the comments from the ladies, uh, you know, as well, um, who are so inspired yeah. by what you're saying. Um, uh, somebody says, be ready to start small in your investment journey. And I'm yes. seeing so many ladies tagging their friends, like, you need to be here. Yeah, you need to, you need to <laughs> listen to Yeah, I'd like to thank yeah. everyone who's here. Remember, please ask the questions. Emily will be with us um, for the next 40 minutes or so. 
Um, and I want this to be as inclusive as possible. So, you know, as we say in this group, we're not leaving anyone behind. Mm. Yeah. Um, Emily, I'm just curious about your transition, you know, from, from the hostels into now residentials. And you spoke about, okay, you know, making actions deliberately, um, you know, strategically. And, you know, through your life and some of the decisions that you've made, it's very clear that you're very strategic and deliberate. Yes. And my thinking is just based on, on my conversation with you is that even mm. in the type of property that you've gone into, which is affordable uh, properties, mm. you've also been very strategic with it. Um, you know, for me, it, it just means that more of us are actually able to afford to put mm. our money into real estate. How did you yeah. reach that decision yeah. and how, how did you transition then from the hostels into affordable uh, okay. residentials? Okay, so um, of course, at the beginning, uh, this vision was not in our minds. You know, when we're doing all this at 23, 24, you know, even into, into our 30s, we, we didn't have clarity of what we're going to do next. All we knew is that we wanted to be financially independent. All we knew is that we wanted to be at a place where we have passive income that can finance our lifestyle, and therefore we didn't need to work. But uh, as Micharo was approaching 40, um, you know, he spent a lot of time thinking about his life and he decided to stop being an architect. I mean, he's done brilliant. He's done amazing buildings in Nairobi. If anyone knows the Burma Hotel, that's his project. If anyone knows Mihrab, you know, the first community bank office in, in, uh, in, on Lenana Road, that's also one of his, his projects. So he was, he was a very good architect, but he felt, you know, he wanted to do something different. So we started Savo. Yeah, so we started Savo. He started first uh, while I was still in the bank, and then I later joined him. So when we started Savo, we spent a lot of time just thinking, okay, we have attained financial independence. We don't need to necessarily work to finance our lifestyle. So what, what are we gonna do? And we were young, he was 40, I was 37. Um, no, I can't have been 37, I'm five years younger than him. He must have been 42 <laughs> while I was 37, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, we just spent a lot of time thinking, what do we want to do together? What business can we run uh, together? And, 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 and we, we said, you know, we had achieved financial independence through real, real estate. Is it possible for us to enable other Kenyans to also achieve financial independence through real estate? Um, maybe you, you know, maybe one one can say we were lucky because he was he he's an architect, so he was able to build. Uh, I was a banker, so I could be able to borrow. But not many of us have such opportunities uh, as Kenyans. Yeah, many of us want to invest in real estate, but you know, once you hear the price of of a house. Uh, you just decide to go and buy a Subaru. I mean, because really, you can't afford. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, who can, you know, how many of us can afford anything above 7 million in cash? Very few of us can. And if you're to take a mortgage, mm -hmm. then it becomes extremely expensive cause, because of interest rates. So we said, okay, we are going to, we are going to enable other Kenyans to achieve financial independence through real estate. So we spend a lot of time even just trying to understand what are the needs of Kenyans, you know? All of us would like to be to have a financially secure future. All of us, I think. I don't think there's anyone who wishes to just, you know, to have a difficult, let me call it old age or later years. All of us would like to have a financially secure future, yeah? And it's only possible to do that through investments. But um, getting affordable investment isn't easy. Affordable just in terms of the price. It's not easy as well. And also getting affordable financing is not easy. So we identified those as the three problems that many of us have. You know, to have the desire to have a financially secure future, uh, affordable investments and affordable financing. So we cracked our heads and said, how can we do this for Kenyans? Um, and, and then we began. That's, that's really the story of Savo. So our desire was really just to, what we had done for ourselves through the hostels, can we enable other Kenyans to do that? So it needed to be affordable, it needed to be accessible, and it needed to be something that will actually enable you to become financially independent. So not really homes for you to stay in, but something that will be giving you passive cash flows on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. so, so that was our goal. And, and we started with a project in, in, in Rongai. That was our first project. Um, and in having those conversations, we said, the reason why real estate is very expensive is because number one, we build, we build three bedroom houses. Of course, a three bedroom house will be expensive. But if you're doing this as an investment, you can look at the target market. You don't need to be the one to live there. 
right? So if you look mm -hmm. at the Kenyan population, uh, there are very many young people. I think about 70% of the Kenyan population is less than 35 years old. So if I'm 25, I'm 20 straight from campus, do I really need a three bedroom? No. I just need, you know, a small comfortable space. I need a studio, I need a one bedroom apartment. So just by reducing the size of that unit, we've already made it affordable because a studio apartment will not be 10 million like a one bedroom, I mean like a three bedroom. Yeah, and we're able to now come up with units. I remember our very our, our unit that was the lowest price was 1.4 million. Uh, and we did this in Ambakasi. We did some studios in Ambakasi for 1.4 million. Later we reduce it to 1.1. That's an affordable amount, you know. So 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 we knew many Kenyans would be able to afford that. Um, the other thing we did, we said, even if I came to Terian and told you, give me 1.4 million pap, right? Many of us don't have 1.4 million. So we came up with a payment plan, a payment plan that enables someone to pay over time. Yeah, and, uh, and, and you can pay as low as 20, 20 for the 1.1 million units, you can pay as low as 20,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 a month. That is now affordable, and that, that then becomes affordable to many Kenyans. Yeah, so that's, that's how the transition happened. So we wanted to enable Kenyans to become financially independent by investing in real estate, and we also wanted to you know, to really just sort out the problem that Kenyans were facing. One, uh, mm -hmm. afford affordability, uh, accessible financing, and actually investing in something that will give you monthly cash flows. That's the reason we then started Savo. Yes. Wow, Emily, you know, I've just, I, I didn't know about the Embakasi property and the 1.4 and, the and then later 1.1. 1 .1. Um, and yeah. I'm just looking at the questions, um, you know, that are coming in. And, and and a lot of the ladies are asking, in fact, somebody says, kindly make sure Emily leaves her contacts for other one-on-one <laughs> -on -one consultations. And I'm so glad yes, that Sally yes. from the team is, is, is engaging. Um, so ladies, yes. uh, there's, a, there's a lady who's also engaging on the comments. She is leaving her phone number and her email address mm. at Sally at Savo.co, I mean, Savo.ke, Sally at Savo.ke. Um, on yeah. the comment section as well. So if you'd like to hear more about the how you can start investing in real estate, uh, please keep in mm -hmm. touch with Sally. She has a phone number there and an email address as well. So speaking of properties, I know that there's one that you've just put out into the market. Um, yeah. I've seen the road, uh, on Gong Road. Uh, the prices look very reasonable. And may, I guess yeah. just before we go to that, um, we've got a question here. Do you encourage mm. small investors and groups to acquire property in Savo? And how can we reach you? Perhaps you can just um, respond to that and then tell us about the new property that you have and um, how the ladies in the group can can tap into it. Okay. Um, Terian, kindly repeat the question. So there's Do a I? lady who asked, do you encourage small investors who are in yes. groups to acquire property yes. in Savo, and yes. how can we reach? I know I've responded to the reach, uh, reaching in terms of on the conversation today, uh, but of yeah. course, uh, you can talk about how else they can okay. be able to okay. reach. Okay. okay, so uh, yeah, thank you, thank you for, for that question. There's a, there's a time I did, uh, I, I did, um, what do I call it? You know, there's something we call Fire Friday, ladies. So Fire Friday is, you know, a session where we just have different conversations around investing in real estate, different topics. Um, you know, if you just went to YouTube and, uh, you know, and search for sabo.ke, you'll be able to see all the all the videos that, that are there. Uh, and one of the sessions we, we did was uh, women and money. Uh, I think that's that's a very good session. I would encourage all of us to, to watch it. And, um, and, and, and what we said, is what are the differences between women when it comes to you know money? What are the differences between women and money? How do women make our how do we women make our decisions, and do how do men make their decisions? Um, and and one of the things that that came out is we, as women we are very good together. We are very good you know when we come together as ladies either through a chama or an investment group. Uh, yeah, and and you know while maybe it can be difficult for me as a person to start, it is. It is, it is much easier if you start it together as, as a group of ladies, because then you're able to raise the monthly payments together. You're able to use the expertise of the different ladies together. You know, somebody maybe is a banker, another person is a lawyer, 
another one is an accountant. So you're able to, you know, use the expertise uh, to even make very good investment decisions. So yes, we allow ladies to invest together. You can come uh, and invest, whether you have a company together or just in your individual names, that, that is possible, that's highly encouraged. Uh, yeah, we have very many chamas that have invested with us. And uh, yeah, and we can actually come and have a session with the other ladies. Perhaps you're in this, you're in this session, but it's just you alone or two of you. But we can actually come and visit your 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 chama and you know have a conversation with the other ladies, maybe expound to them what this investment is all about, and then they'll be able to make a decision. Yes. So how do you reach us? Uh, Sally has given her number, her email address. Uh, our website is sabo.ke. So if you just went to the website and look for sabo.ke, you'll find us. If you go to YouTube, sabo.ke, you'll see a lot of videos that we have done. I think very educative, uh, very informative videos. So that's those are the those are the various forums you can be able to to reach us. Yes, Terian. All right. Emily, um, anyway, we've got a question uh, from Jane Gavima. She says, "What is the mm. return on investment if somebody invests in a two-bedroom house?" Okay. So so when you're when you're talking about real estate. Um, the return on investment for real estate, you look at your rental yield, right? Uh, so you look at, you can look at two things. You look at your rental yields and you look at your capital gains. I prefer rental yield because rental yield says, uh, I have invested, I'll give you an example. I've invested uh, 2 million shillings in a unit. Uh, that is, for example, let me talk about the project that you were saying. It's on Wanye Road. Uh, uh, we call it Savo Skywalk. So there we have a studio for 2 million. So you invest in a studio, it's 2 million shillings, you get rent of 15,000. So how do you calculate your rental yield? You take your 15,000 and that's your monthly rent. Get that amount for one year uh, and then you divide that by the money you put in. That gives you a rental yield and that comes to about 9%. So most of our projects, you will find whether it's a one bedroom or a two bedroom, your rental yield will be at least 8%, between 8 and 10%. Yeah, that would then be your rental yield. What is the average rental yield in the market for, for real estate, especially for rent, rental apartments, not commercial? Uh, I mean, residential apartments, not commercial. You'll find that for majority of units in Nairobi, residential, you'll find they have rental yields of about 5%. Uh, six percent so the higher the rental yield the better the investment so anything eight percent and above is a good return yeah mm -hmm. uh, you also look at capital gains but uh you know capital gains are you have to dispose the asset to benefit from capital gains mm -hmm. so so while for our apartments we because we, we sell them off plan you'll find that our price by the time you're completing construction the appreciation is about 30 percent in capital gains just because we started selling them off plan and therefore the price was discounted yeah mm -hmm. i hope I've, I've been able to answer you well yes yes yeah i'm, I'm sure you have and if um the lady has a further question please feel free yes. to ask on on the comments and we'll we will try and answer as many of your questions as possible. Um, so okay. does Savo have a rent to own on affordable budget? That's another question that we have for you, Emily. Okay, so so far we don't we don't have rent to own. We are trying to work on it. Uh, we are trying to work on it and I'll, I'll tell you why. Our payment plan is a five-year payment plan, yeah? So you'll find uh, the lowest amount, for example, if you bought a studio, the lowest amount you pay would be about 27 to 30,000 shillings a month, but the rent for that unit would be about 12,000. So there's an additional amount that someone has to put in. Uh, but rent to own, it means whatever rent somebody would have been paying is the monthly payments that they should be making. And therefore the payment plan needs to be more than five years, yeah? So for now it's still at five years uh, and therefore, you know, you can live in it yourself and do the top up, but it's, it doesn't work exactly the way, you know, generally people know rent to own to work, rent to own to work, yes. Because we need to increase the payment period to say about 10 years for that to then, for the numbers to make sense, yeah. But for now, uh, yes, you can come and live in it, but you'd have to do an additional top up to be able to end up finishing your payments, yes. All right. Um, so we have yeah. a question. I, I, I had seen it earlier, uh, but because there's so yeah. many comments coming in, I've not been able to to yeah. find it. 
Um, but she says yeah. they, uh, and I'm assuming it's her husband and her, decided to first invest in, in the home. Um, and yeah. she's asked, you know, what advice you have for, for people who have, because uh, she says she believes that that was not the right decision at the time, okay. that they should have started mm. off perhaps investing in smaller properties and then now getting yeah. into their own home later. What advice would you have for her? I, I totally agree with her. Uh, this is my belief. Uh, it, it, is, it is very important to first sort out your cash flows before sorting out your home. Why, why is this important? I have been with people who bought a home first. Remember, you've bought a home and it's, it's the place you're living in. Uh, and and a, home, a home is usually a very emotional uh, decision. Uh, and yes, it could be financial, but it's not really, it is, you know, there's a debate, is it an investment, is it not? But you see, a home does not give you monthly income. And especially in Nairobi, it is very difficult let me word it differently. In Nairobi, if I went to Kilimani, for example, and, um, and bought a house, and I bought it through a mortgage, so I'll take a mortgage, maybe a 15-year loan, 15 year loan uh, for 15 million shillings, I'm paying interest at 14%, uh, you will find my monthly payments will be about 200,000, while if I was to rent that house, I would be getting about 80,000 shillings a month. So you see there's a very big difference in terms of, I have to get another 120,000 to be able to afford to pay for that house, right? Mm -hmm. So in Nairobi, if you take a mortgage, it becomes very hard. The rent you get is usually much less than the monthly payments you're paying the bank. So yeah. for that reason, I feel it is, it is, it's actually cheaper to rent, but while you're renting, have a plan where you're actually investing in affordable units right that give you monthly rent that can then pay your rent does that does that make sense so sort out your cash flows first mm -hmm. before you sort out your home and the rental income you get can be able to afford enable you to live wherever you want to live and and that was our story to date Terian, maybe the ladies will laugh at me but to date with everything that we have done we do not own a home in nairobi just because every time i did the math it didn't it didn't make sense I earn oh. a higher return by investing in affordable units and then let the rent I get from those affordable units pay my rent. And a lot of times you will find, like from the hostels, the rent from the hostels can pay my rent. It can do, you know, cover upkeep, pay school fees. It can cover all my needs and I choose where to live. Uh, so once you've sorted out your cash flows, then later, when when your decision to own a home is not really a strenuous decision you can then decide you want to build you know in a way that's a lot more affordable and not a mortgage um yeah, yeah. I, that, that would be my answer i'll give you one last example there's a lady uh who came to us she owned a home in nairobi she was just about to retire her husband and her they were just about to retire so their question was yes we have this home we're about to retire we have no source of income how will we survive how will we buy food how will we you know how will we just even maintain the home uh, and we know pension nowadays is not a lot so they came to us and uh, ultimately what we ended up doing was to demolish their house and build apartments on their land so now they don't own a home per se but they make you know they make they make a, such a significant amount of money that they're able to pay rent somewhere else meet their daily expenses and even have extra to invest in retirement you know yeah so mm -hmm. so i feel like if they had sorted out their cash flows first they wouldn't have found themselves in that situation yeah so to the lady who has asked the question mm -hmm. i'm happy that you acknowledge that you should have invested first mm -hmm. And I don't think it is too late. I think you can still, you can start in, it's never too late. You can start investing. Uh, perhaps you will just need to, I usually say, Kaza Mkanda, Kidogo. <laughs> you know, like live on a tight budget so that you're able to invest and sort out your yeah. cash. Yeah. That's what I'd say, Terian. All right. Thank you so much, Emily. Now we've got about two questions around. Um, around 
uh, off-plan developments. Okay. And I know that, you know, there's some people whose fingers have been burnt and we've seen, um, you know, in the news, a number of off-plan, uh, you know, companies that invested in off-plan where the investors actually got their fingers burnt. So with with such a number of failed off-plan developments, how do you protect your your purchasers, uh, the, you know, the ones who, who are investing with you? And what are you doing as a company to ensure that you don't mm -hmm. go down that road? Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll start again from the beginning. Um, so at the beginning, we had a very noble idea. And, and we actually started at a time when, you know, many companies were really struggling. So we started at a very bad time. Uh, but we said, you know what, uh, we think this is a noble idea. We, we will first go to our friends, our friends, our colleagues, just people who knew us. Because at that time, we did not have any track record. Uh, it wasn't possible for us to say we've done project one, two, three, so we can deliver. Um, so the only people who could trust us are people who knew us as individuals. So we went to those, uh, largely our friends and our colleagues and even family, and they trusted us. They believed in us and they invested with us and were able to deliver our first project. And then we went to our second project. So our first project was in Rongai. Then we went to our second project. Um, and, and our second project, that's where we had these studios for 1.4 million. Almost everybody who had invested in our first project came and invested in the second project just because we had delivered. And so they started telling, let's say, for, for example, Terian, you've invested with us in our first project. You come and pick, you know, you come and pick other units in the second project. But now you have confidence. And then you tell your sister, Anne, and then you tell your friend, Grace, you know. So you are the one who starts to spread the message because you had seen that we deliver. So that was Embakasi. Then our third project is here where I am. It's called Coral Beds, it's in Zindigua. So by the time we were getting here, we had a track record. So people could see two projects done and delivered on time. And uh, I think at that time also, timelines were such a big issue. So we, we said, you know, when we promise our investors we'll do this in 15 months, we will try our best to actually do it in 13, right? So we were very keen to, make, to keep the timelines to actually deliver on time, to deliver the, the quality that we have promised, yeah? So by the time we were coming to the Ndigua, we did not only have our friends and family, we even now had people, you know, just, just general Kenyans who came to us and because they could see what we had done, believed in us and invested with us. So, so far we've done, uh, we're actually on the six projects. So Rongai, Embakasi, here in Dindigwa, a second one in Embakasi, Roy Sambu, and now the one in, in the one we are calling Savo Skywalk on Wanye Road. Okay, so mm -hmm. I think I think I've said I've said a lot, but number one, uh, if you want to invest in real estate, you must look at the track record of the person you're talking to. Have they done anything before? Have they delivered any projects before? And how did they deliver? Did they deliver it on time? Did they meet the timelines, or were there any delays? So that's that's part of your due diligence. Again, if you go to our website, I've done a session on due diligence. What do you look out for before you invest? So if you can just go to sabo.k again and look for a video on, on due diligence. Maybe Sally can just post it in the link for, for the ladies to see. Please, I would encourage us to go and watch that mm. video. It will give us a lot more details. So number one, look at the track record of the developer. Who is Who are these people? Yeah. I usually say... Uh, Terian, you know, when you speak about Semi Samcharo, he's an architect, he's a member of AK. Are they members of any professional bodies? Uh, you know, I am a chartered financial analyst. Would I want to do anything that would put my charter, you know, in jeopardy? Perhaps not. So that's one one thing to check and actually tick. Um, have they delivered any projects as I've talked about? And actually go and visit. So when you want to invest in Skywalk, don't go to Skywalk only. Come here and actually see. You know, ask ask questions. When did you start? When did you finish? Visit the rooms. Go and see the actual houses. So you know, actually visit and see. Um, the other thing is this this due diligence around the title. Does this developer own the title? When they say that we are building on this land, is that land actually their land? Right? Because that's that's also been another problem. You know, in the past, um, do a search. Get a lawyer if you can. Let a lawyer do a search for you. Let a lawyer actually check the documents for you. Uh, there's usually a document called the agreement for sale. Don't pay your money without the agreement for sale, right? Get an agreement for sale. Read it. Get a lawyer to even interpret it for you. Uh, try and find out 
what are the responsibilities of the developer? What are your responsibilities? And if either of us fails to meet our obligations, then what happens? It needs to be provided for in the agreement for sale. So those are some of the things you need to look out for um, even before you invest. But as Savo, what have we done? So I think as Savo, we are, remember our purpose. Our purpose is what is guiding us to enable Uterian to become financially independent. So that's a very big bar. That's a very big burden. I can't be the one who then takes your money and then you lose your money because I didn't finish a project. So we are extremely keen to make sure we finish our project on time um, and, and we actually deliver what we have promised to deliver. The other thing we, did with our invest we do with our investors, we send our investors a weekly site update. So if you invest uh, before we break ground, when we break ground, we send you photos, we've broken ground. When we reach fast flow, we send you photos and we send you these photos every week. So you can actually watch the progress on a weekly basis and, and actually see as you're progressing. And remember, you're not paying the full cash at once. You're paying it on a monthly basis. So you're actually able to see that, you know, last week these people had reached here. It's been two weeks. I'm not seeing any progress. You can actually call and ask. I'm not seeing any progress. Uh, I'm not going to pay, you know, until I see this progress. So that ensures that we hold each other accountable. But really, Teria, let ladies, let's go and look for that video on due diligence and let's watch it. I think we will learn a lot from, from there. Yes. Thank you, Emily. And I see that the link has been posted on the comments section. Um, so ladies, uh, and before you invest in anything, not only real estate, it could be stocks, it could be bonds, it could be anything. The most important thing is to always make sure that you have done your due diligence. So a video um, has been shared by Sally. The link is on the comment section. Please look at it, um, go through it before you invest in, in any property. Um, so Emily, uh, we've got a question up from Diaspora and um, a, a lady is asking, you know, how would uh, Diaspora members or also get involved and how can they how can they invest in in Savo? Okay, thanks. So yes, it is possible to invest even from the diaspora. I think uh, we have we have we have I'd say twenty percent thereabouts of our investors actually are from the diaspora. Um, I remember in twenty in 2019 I actually went went to the US went to the UK just to tell people in the diaspora about us and as a result of that trip a number of, of people from the diaspora are able to invest with us so even if you're not in Kenya you are able to invest um, what I would like to encourage people from the diaspora is you know the due diligence process you should still do it even while you're away yeah uh, so if you're able to come and visit and see that would be fantastic but if you're not able to come you can always send a sister you can always send a family member or even a trusted friend to come and meet us to come and talk to us and to even visit and see the projects that we have done and even help you make the decision of yes or no or what do you like you know so that due diligence process even when you're in the diaspora it is very important to to still do it uh, so there's nothing that stops you from investing i mean you're able to pay even from whichever country there are various methods of payment uh, so you're able to pay for your investment progressively and when we finish uh, remember i haven't mentioned we do property management so it means that when you finish when we finish building we will get for you a tenant we will collect for you your rent and we're also able to send you your rent on a monthly basis so even if you're in the diaspora it's possible to invest with us we will walk the journey with you um, every step of the way we will facilitate and just make sure that it is a smooth process and yes you will be able to start earning your rent in time yes so mm -hmm. it is possible. okay so um we've got another question on on the counties uh, actually, more than yep. one people have asked uh, about about the counties and if, if you have plans to um, to go outside of Nairobi, perhaps you can just tell us about that now. Yeah. Okay. So maybe not now. I know there's a lot of potential in the counties. Uh, I believe the potential in Nairobi is maybe still, you know, there's still demand for housing for young people in Nairobi. Uh, and then also we like that we are able to deliver. So we don't like to stretch ourselves too thin. So assume I have a project in uh, Eldoret and, and one in Nairobi. Managing the one in Nairobi is much easier than the one in Eldoret. So just because of capacity restriction, restrictions, we are not able to go to the counties now. In time we will, but, but not 
perhaps not in the next year or so, but in time we definitely will. Yeah, just because of capacity and just because we want to ensure that when we promise, we are able to deliver. Yes. All right. Emily, um, as, as uh, I see, we've got just about seven minutes to go and I'm seeing a number of questions about the current developments that you have and the current opportunities that you have. So I'd like you to, to just take us through the available opportunities currently, um, okay. what they cost, what the process is as well. And of course, okay. you know, why, why the ladies on Africa's Leading Ladies should should think of, of investing in, um, in real estate. It's um, Okay. Okay. So, so yes, ladies, we should invest in real estate. I think, um, again, I did a session on real estate. Maybe Sally can also post it just saying, what are the, you know, why should we invest in real estate? And, and we all agree that real estate is a real creator. You know, if you want to get real wealth, real estate is a place to go. I mean, real estate will hedge you, will hedge your investment against inflation. Real estate has, you know, the, the returns you want. It's, it's predictable because uh, it's monthly. So the returns are predictable. Um, your, your hedge against inflation, I've said, you have capital gains. And it's generational wealth, really, because you can, you know, once you've invested in real estate, it's, it's a source of cash flows that can go to your children and even your children's children. So real estate is, is a, good, a good investment. So you just need to find the right partner, the right pricing, and ensure that you're able to get the return. But yes, if you're able to kindly watch that video again on real estate, yeah. So which projects do we have? Um, the available opportunities of all the, of all the projects we have done, uh, there are only two projects where you can invest in now. Uh, one in Embakasi, we call it Savo Studios, and that's complete. That's not off plan. We actually launched it last week. Again, you can watch the video of the launch. So we launched it last week. It is complete. Um, so you're able to invest in it and actually start earning rent immediately. Uh, what do you have there? We have units at uh, 2.6 million. Uh, that's one bedroom and studio apartments at 2 million. So those are the two typologies you have, one 2.6, one 2 million. Um, and perhaps you should be able to get a tenant very soon and start earning great. The only difference with that one is that because it's complete and it's not off plan, um, you know, you you need to pay for it. I'm sure I'm saying this word, but like it's cash, you know, we don't have a payment plan, but we can discuss. So yes, so that's one option. Uh, if you're interested, reach out to Sally and Sally will, she'll gladly take you there, you know, take you through what's available and even take you through the investment process. So that's one. The second one is the one uh, on, on off Gong Road. Uh, we call it Savo Skywalk. Amazing design, amazing design. I think that's our best design so far. So there we have, uh, we have studios at 2 million. We have one bedrooms at uh, 2.5 and a bigger one bedroom at 3 million. So those are the three options available. And for those, you, you have the leeway to pay over one year, two years, three, all the way to five years. So it's very affordable. I mean, you can pay as low as, again, 30,000 shillings a month, yeah, uh, for the smallest unit. So, so those are the available options. Um, and again, why should you come to Savo? Delivery, we have proved, we have delivered five projects so far, uh, deliver them to spec, good quality, on time. Um, that's one. Two, the flexibility in terms of payment. It, you know, remember the lady who allowed us to pay over time, and we used to pay her 27,000 shillings a month. So we replicated the same. You can come and, and you can be able to pay 27,000 shillings a month as an individual and even as a group of ladies, right? Um, the other thing is that finally we do property management for you. So we will get for you a tenant, we will collect for you your rent, and we'll send you your rent at the end of the month. Totally hassle-free, totally hassle-free, yes. So come, come, come to Savo. Come and visit us. Come and visit us. Yes. All right. Um, so Emily, thank you so much. There's some great, really great feedback from the ladies. I hope you'll be able to also um, just go through the comments. I know that your team has been mm. extremely um, active, responding to some of the questions from the ladies on the um, on the chat. But I also hope that you can, uh, you know, just find some time and look through because there's there's so much. Um, you know, that the ladies are, are asking about, um, that they, uh, you know, this, I'm just saying, wow, wow, wow. I'm, impre I'm impressed. Very informative. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Oh, nice, <laughs> then somebody nice. says, um, you, oh, God, are they over? So, Roy Sambu, that's over? Uh, Roy Sambu, 
Can I say it's over? Sorry? It's sold out. It's all, I, I was just okay. checking less than one unit that's available. It's Roy Sambu is sold out. Yeah. So, but, right. but in time, we'll have another project to Roy Sambu. Yeah, in time. Okay. Yeah. And then the, yeah. the question I'd like you to respond to about your choice of location, uh, which I okay. see has been okay. asked more than once um, as we almost come okay. to an end. Um, you know, what informs your choice of, of location? And, and I'm looking at that question through the eyes of, an, of a possible investor. Okay, okay. So, Terian, I'd like you to change that a little. Uh, look at that question through the eyes of the tenant. <laughs> So, so, so because we are investing to be able to get rental income, the person who's going to live in that unit is the tenant, unless you want to invest for yourself. But largely, a lot of our investors, we are investing to be able to get rental income. Uh, so who is the potential tenant? So the potential tenant, we call them young aspirational urbanite. So this is a young person who, who, who wants to, you know, to live in a place where there's amenities, to live in a place where they can easily dash to town and come back, uh, to live in a place where, you know, they can Uber quickly. Um, yeah. So, in fact, there's something they say, um, they say minimum staggering distance, you know. So they want that they've gone wherever they've gone to entertain themselves and come back, and it takes them a very short time to get to where they live. So, so that's our potential tenant. So those are the people we look at. So that's what drives our decision around locations. And, and if you look at the locations we are in, um, let's start with Embakasi. Embakasi, I'll give you an example of the first project. Uh, we finished building it, and in six weeks, it was fully occupied. 100 units, fully taken. And the occupancy rate in that place has been 100% across, across time. You know, even if somebody moves out, there's someone moving in immediately. Why? Because it's accessible, because young people would like to live there. It's close to where they work, it's close to town, you know, means of transport is easy. So those are some of the things you look at. If you look at um, the second project in Embakasi, we finished in, you know, we started letting it in November. How many tenants do we have now? 60? We have 70 tenants already. And it's just been what? Perhaps four weeks? Yeah, we already have 70 tenants. So we look at the place where the tenant would like to live in our selection of locations and the indigo as well i mean the occupancy rate we have here we have about four about 400 you know more than 400 tenants living here already so that's that's the that's what we look at Roisambu, we expect Roisambu to be fantastic as well just look at the crowd in Roisambu. it's very young people mm. all the universities are, are allowed are around uh thicker road and most of these yeah. people, when they finish the campus, they, they just want to live along thicker road. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. that's our criteria. So if you told us to go to, for example, Kitengela, it would be a bit of a, a stretch. It would, you know, it yeah. perhaps wouldn't work as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> yes. Emily, um, so as we wind up, I see there's still many questions that are coming through, but I... I'm just. I, I would like to um, request that your your team and yourself just you know go through the comments. Not only now, yes. but because we're going to put yeah. this video uh, on the group, so that those who are not able to join in will still be mm. able to watch and benefit from the conversation um, that we've had. Okay. Um, very okay. good question, Emily. Um, yes. Your encouragement challenge to the women who are on this group. We have. An incredible, uh, you know, uh, variety, if I can use that, of women yeah. in Africa. But mostly these are women who are so keen and just want to ensure that, that their life reaches its highest potential. Um, so from your experience, um, from, uh, you know, your, your strategic and deliberate uh, moves yeah. along the journey, yes. because, yeah. you know, a word of um, you know, both okay. in the investment space and just for encouragement as, as women, as mothers as, as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, this is what I'd like to tell the ladies. Uh, we are, I think ladies, we can achieve a lot if we changed our mindsets and believed in ourselves. Um, I think for a very long time, uh, as ladies, we have felt that men are better when it comes to investment matters when it comes to money matters men are better than us uh they 
men don't find the subject of money or investment as threatening as women do um we we are scared of learning and we you know we we say it's okay to actually be ignorant or we we have to go to a man to help us make our investment decisions uh maybe even many of us say that a man is my financial plan uh, so my encouragement to all the ladies in this session is that as ladies yes we can as women all of us we can we can be able to take our financial matters in our own hands we can be able to actually even understand money matters it's possible to spend time read get someone to ask a question uh, have a meeting with a group of ladies it is possible to understand financial issues and it's possible to make your own personal decisions when it comes to financial matters and it's possible for you to invest and be successful and be the woman that you would like to be and reach your greatest potential that god created you to you know to achieve so ladies let's not shy away let's not assume money matters are men matters let's not say it is difficult it is possible if you find it difficult come to me we shall work with you we shall make sure you get to a place where you actually understand terian i'm happy to have this conversation with these ladies again and again and again because i believe as women we can it is possible for us to understand it's possible for us to start investing and it's possible for us to take our financial matters in our own hands and be successful women in our own rights let us work hard to earn our seat on the table because we can yeah that's that's my encouragement to ladies None, no one should be made to feel you're a woman therefore you can't or it's difficult no 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 the only thing we need to do is to change the mindset to believe we can and lastly to 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 appreciate that financial matters are not emotional matters you know <laughs> that we can actually make financial de decisions with our heads with logic and not with emotions if we do that we will be yeah. able to succeed yes well That's emily thank yeah. you yes. oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> so first of all yeah i'm so excited that you made it to join us um today i'm just happy mm. that you know when i sat with you the first time that we did and the inspiration mm. Uh, and the lessons that I learned, even though we're meeting, you know, just an hour or so. Um, yeah, I'm so happy yeah. that what I from you, I was inspired by you in terms of investing in real estate. We've had, mm. um, you know, over 500 in this evening just join us to to listen to this mm. to this conversation and challenge to yeah. begin to to. Invest. Thank you so much, and I'm so glad that you've yeah. also offered to come back again. Um, yes, and yes. and I hope that we can have conversation again maybe in January or in February in February um, and my yeah. hope is that the ladies who have been here and I can see from their comments so it's not even a hope mm. I can see from the yeah. comments that this has been a formative session it has really challenged them as well um, especially now you know this is the time when we should begin to think of of our vision boards and 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 and, yeah. and the dreams that we have and then begin to work backwards from there. I mean, this year has been difficult yeah. for most people, but then, uh, you know, there's always a new opportunity that opens up every day. So ladies, if you're in a chama, in a group, I know um, like for the current uh, property that's available, that's the Skywalk, 10% uh, mm. down, and then on yes, a monthly 20, between 27,000 7, shillings thereabout. So, mm. and I know, you know, as women, we have some money we've put aside somewhere we are members of a of a sako or a chama this is a really good opportunity for us um to really begin to think of of taking charge of our investments and, and especially yeah. those investments that you know we don't really look at as as women so emily I, I thank you for that i also want to thank all the ladies who joined us this evening i am so glad that you made time as well i know those of us who are mothers uh, this is not always um, a great uh, time between seven and eight, but it also shows our commitment to to making ourselves better and our commitment to growing and our commitment to, because when we grow, it's not about us. It's the people around us. Yeah. It's our family, it's our children. It's it's the other people that we you know make an impact on when we make the right investment decisions. And I'd like to thank everybody who has made time to join us this evening. Emily Mcharo uh, from Savo, 
uh, thank you so much for making time. And ladies, just, just to say one last thing, which really threw, you know, Spanner in the works for me tonight, is that thing yeah. of when she was, her and her husband had a combined income of 50,000 bob. Yes. They were still bold enough to buy a property yes. worth 1 million shillings in Rongai to start developing property. Yes. Like, honestly, I, if, if that, oh, that, that, is, that just completely threw my mind yeah. in disarray. It, it really felt hard. Yeah. But we can do it. We can do it. And, and yeah, we, can we can start small. We can. We, yeah, yes, we just we need can. to reduce the shoes and the clothes. Yes, we can. Yes, exactly. We can. And living within yeah. our means. And, and you know, you yeah, also told us, that yeah. even when your income increased, you did not change yeah. your, you know, our lifestyle. Your life. Yeah, we didn't change because our lifestyle. You were so yes. Focused and intentional yes. and deliberate with yes. where you wanted to go. And you actually exactly. got there exactly. even before you thought you, know, you would. So thank you so much. Yeah. Um, ladies, yeah. we will we yeah. will keep this video up. Um, of course, within in the group, uh, Sally from yeah. Savile has been talking to you and been, you know, just keeping us engaged as well, responding to your questions on the comment section. Yeah. She has left mm -hmm. um, an email, a phone number, and also some links mm -hmm. for you to go through that will teach you a little yeah. bit about, uh, you know, uh, because the Savile team puts together some videos to help us, uh, you know, just mm -hmm. ease our journey into investing in real estate. So uh, pay mm -hmm. attention to that. And I just, I guess that's the end. You know, we try, we always try to close staff on time and end on yeah. time. I do run over a little yeah. bit by about minutes. Yeah. Um, and um, Emily, thank you. I, I will reach out thank again um, yes, towards yes, the beginning yes. of the year. Uh, but ladies, those yeah. of you who are looking to start investing quickly, um, Emily mm. mentioned the current property, which is uh, Skywalk on One Year Road, yeah. um, yes. has uh, apartments starting from 2.4 2 million. Two million, two million. From two million three. shillings. Yes. Um, so, you know, three. Let's, let's get yeah. that going. Let's take charge of our financial yes. security. With yes. that, ladies, thank you all so much. I thank want to you. wish you a wonderful evening. Remember, for those ladies around you who haven't joined Africa's Leading Ladies, please let them know that this is just a space for us to grow, to inspire each other, to get challenged, to meet yeah. amazing women as well who have gone yes. ahead of us. And done amazing things. So thank you all so much, Emily. I hope you're a member of Africans Leading Ladies. I will from now, like from now. I'm going to. You will it. from now. Okay. Yeah. I will. All right. Thank you so I much. Will. I appreciate for it. Sure I will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for your leadership yeah. within the real estate sector. As a woman, that's something we, you know, we, we should celebrate, and we celebrate you yeah. tonight. So yeah. we look forward thank to having you. you on the group. Thank you. And all Thank the ladies you. who joined, have a wonderful night. Um, yeah, let's go and take care of our families for the rest of the evening. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you, Terian. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.